man, we should do an episode about this. You know, we should just like do it. And he's like, yeah, but we don't have anything, everything set up. And I was like, golly, how am I going to just, how can we do? And so I just pulled out my phone. We just started audio recording it. And I was like, you know, we could still use this. So I'm in the process of putting it together a Patreon. So that way you can have episodes like audio episodes. If you want to go back, you, you subscribe to the Patreon and it gives you like full access to all the, all the different content. So. And you can also do a discord too. Um, you just yeah. have to have a, uh, have a site that hosts the, uh, like the, the information like, like uh-huh. Patreon, but you can start a discord yeah. too. Um, huh. Yeah, Discord was what is what everybody's using now. Hell, I'm in, I'm in Discord with, uh, with gaming and stuff. But I mean, I use it for. Um, yeah, that's why I th- if they hear of Discord, I think of the gaming stuff. No, I mean people, the, the guy, uh, streamers and most social media people now. That's what they use. That's how they talk to their hmm. fans. Just, okay. um, or they huh. create their communities. Man, it's actually pretty. It's pretty cool. There's a there's a uh, couple of people that uh. You know they have a uh, discord worth worth uh paying and you know worth looking at and uh huh. I rather enjoy them um, well I'd uh the, like this stuff is so like I remember back in the day when dad you know because dad was a programmer so he worked with cobol and mainframes and all that stuff so mm-hmm. uh, and he was a a uh, project manager with computer programs and he did um a lot of sharepoint type stuff and he told me yeah. hey son you need to kind of learn how to use sharepoint mm-hmm. and so uh so i decided to kind of learn some things here and there but he never really understood how to set up wi-fi so he would get right right up on me right over my shoulder kind of like right right up on me like just like like that can you please back up? I will show you how to. Do, you are making me very, very uncomfortable. But you know, just shoulder shirking right here, and I, I can't handle it, man. <laughs> well, you know, I, th- I thought he, you know, because he was more on the application admin side. And, yeah. Because, uh, like I said, when I told him when I went into the rift on everything I was going to do to fix to get get his computer back up and running, he was just like, uh, "Just go ahead and do it." Sounds like you got it figured out. Yeah. <laughs> and that's and that's pretty much like with most application admins now. I mean, uh, I mean, even I would say that even though I know what's going on, I'd be like, all right, cool, man. Time to get to yeah. it. So well, that's a uh, get on it. Like um Nicholas, he uh, you know, Joe's son, he does like programming now, but he uses like lots of bots and all that kind of stuff to like and like, you don't really have to know how to code as much as you used to anymore. Is that right? Pretty much. Uh, yeah. I, the only thing I would, yes and no. The uh, they're allowing, you know, with the AI, there's a lot more room for error. Okay. So you don't have to be a perfect coder. Uh, Tyler's son uh, was stepson. Um, went to school at Alabama and he ended up graduating and he uh, designed software for, you know, for AI and bots. Really? And, uh, yeah. Like he's a, uh, he's tried and true. He's good the at Tyler. It. We know. Yeah. I didn't know he had a stepson. Uh, well, him and Christy moved in together. Oh, okay. So okay. There, I, think he's, he's, I didn't know Christy had a son. <laughs> he's got two boys. He's got two boys. Uh, wow. And I met him. He's he's a cool guy. He's a cool guy. But uh, no, man, you know, this last time I talked to Tyler, he was like, uh, you know, man, I've never said this. And I probably should have said this a long time ago. He's like, you know, I've always had Christy in my corner and I've never been. Um, and it's like, I've never been really vocal about her support because I don't. He said, I don't know where I'd be without her. And I said, I don't know where you'd be either. And, you know, it's, it's uh I said, well, you need to go on and just just go ahead and tie it up, buddy, because you ain't yeah. going nowhere. And neither is she. Yeah. You know, y'all y'all yeah. get along good. You both seem yeah. happy. Uh yeah. you know, and y'all have been through the ups and downs together. I mean, you might as well just put it on paper. It don't have to be a big shindig. Go down to the courthouse, get those papers drawn up. Uh, you know, he uh they actually got a good relationship, uh, you know, his previous wife, Kathy, was um and is kind of 
kind of kooky. Um, yeah. You know, to the point where uh, I don't even think his daughter even wants anything to do with him, you know? Really? Um, yeah. Oh, wow. Well, I mean, well, you Does know. Does he have full custody of his daughter? Yeah, he's got full full physical custody. She can only see. Oh, that's the, great. Yeah, so, he, I mean, he's had that from, from day one. Uh, but the problem is, and I think, I don't know if I've, I've talked to you about this, is she tends to move in with men as soon as she meets them. Oof. And, yeah. And it's, it's that, for uh, from a guy who, you know, was exposed to the revolving door growing up, it was uh, – it was it was aggravating because you know they're leaving like <laughs> you know yeah. if you if you know the family um yeah. you know like yeah they're not staying you know it's uh yeah. see you later and i've got several you know uh like a uh, a lady that um uh, somebody i truly cared about well two people um a, one, a person that dated my mother and a person that dated my father you know i still keep in touch with them because um, you know, they've really, they've, they've had a place in my heart, but, uh, I can't tell you how many people came and went and yeah. how aggravating that is when you, when you're a child and you got strangers, like, you know, up oh, it's two months, it's time for a new one, yeah. you know, and it's supposed to be business as usual. Oh, meet such and such. You'll <laughs> love it. I know. I love the last three. Yeah. I, you know, so you're just. And you don't want to come off rude. You don't want to come right. off rude because you know they're on the way out, and that's what Maddie. Was doing. <laughs> like, you, Maddie's like I, she. She even told Tom. She's like, Daddy, I know she's not going to stay with him. Why do I have to even meet him? You know. And then it's this forced, awkward, hey, and you know, you can call me Daddy Tom, and all this. You know, that's what he was telling me, and I was like, Yeah. I, oh I, boy. Well, you know, and he don't care, and and yeah. she she's. Maddie's the type of person where she she's got some of that Tyler in her. So uh she don't have a problem telling people, you know, bad news. She ain't gonna do it. <laughs> you know, I'm just, I'm just not gonna do that, Mom. I'm sorry. She told her mom, I don't yeah. care if it bothers well, him good. or not. That's um good. you know, luckily, uh luckily, uh, you know, my child and, and her stepdad, they get along enough where he's got his own little thing. And, uh, you know, I explained to her, I said, baby, you know, what you call him really doesn't matter. Right. That's not, that's not the, that's not the point. I said, dad has no value. You're the one that puts value in it. That's it's true. How you, it, what you say, how you say it, that's which, true. what it means to you is what gives dad value. Uh, right. right. So when you call, when you, uh, when you say, whatever it is you want to call it, whether it be dad or BD or whatever, just know that that can mean just him be just as important as dad. Right. Like it, doesn't, it doesn't have to be, um, I don't, I said, baby, I, I, I don't need you to say anything mm -hmm. uh, to make me feel better. All right. Like I'm perfectly cool. I know I'm your daddy and I yeah. know you love me. So I'm not, you, you ain't got to worry about me. That's right. Throw, I mean, Worry about him. <laughs> yeah. Daddy's fun. Daddy, Daddy's fine. I know yeah. that I have a good relationship with you. I'm absolutely comfortable, comfortable with that. I, I, I don't have a problem with that. So you right. do what do what's right for you. And I said, if you'll just call him what you what comes natural. If he's got any kind of sense, he's going to hear the tone in your voice and how you say mm -hmm. it when you say it. He's going to realize that that's just as important as that too. Right, and uh, it's like if I were to say to you right now, Quinn Paul, you, it, you're you would be like, What does that mean? Well, Quinn Paul means dad in Thai, right? Right, so if you say that in Thailand, that has a, a meaning, a very mm -hmm. special meaning. People know what that means. Versus right. if you say, You know, dad here, you know what that means. If I were to say Quinn Paul to you, you'd be like, I don't know what that means. Wait, what did you just say? Did you say something bad to me? Did you call me a name or something? No, no, no. That yeah. means that. So no. it, it you per, you give it the meaning. Yeah, and 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 tone and how it's said means everything. In fact, uh, it makes me think of the movie Click with Adam Sandler. You remember that movie? He's got the remote and he can flash flash forward into his life. Mm -hmm. 
there's a scene where now in the movie in the past he's married to um uh gosh what is the actress's name she was played in underworld Kate Kate Beckinsale. Beckinsale. Kate Beckinsale. yeah <laughs> she's bad man. <laughs> Bad, so, there's a there's a scene where they they keep flashing forward and so at some point he loses his family because he became such a workaholic so focused on his career and his future that mm -hmm. he's walking his daughter down the aisle and something happens i think he has a heart attack or something and both him adam sandler's character and the stepfather's there he's like well I, ha I have two dads you know she she grew to a place where you know when they got divorced she reconciled that, that she has two dads where but at, by the end of the movie it flashes back into the past and he's still happily married with his kids and stuff and obviously right. he's not going to do anything to jeopardize his family so no. but that's uh that movie it just makes me think about how you know with families some kids can get to a place where they have well i have two fathers this is this is my this is my dad and this is this is bd you know you know what i'm saying well, you know it, it's all really you know it helps when the parent is like indifferent because i know Angie probably you know in her head because you know when she was younger she was confrontational to him because she didn't understand that um when me and her mother split that he's not a replacement of, of me as That's far right. as her life. Like the, the, nobody's trying to replace me. That's and right. and even before that, you know, when you, you have a child go through that, you know, it's kind of like, they're going to look at the picture. They're going to say, what's wrong with this picture? I've got mama, I've got the dog, I've got my room in my house. He don't fit. Daddy's supposed to be in the spot. Right. So right. they are going to go after the person they don't know. Even right. if I kill my child, maybe we it didn't work out. See, at that age, man, dad and mom can't really do anything wrong, especially if they do a lot of things right. If yeah. you're close with your child. And that kind of really never goes away. I mean, I I think I even mentioned to you about my mother. Uh my mother's not a good was not a good parent. Um but nobody else can say that but me. And if anybody says that, then well, they're lying. My mom was the best right. mom in the world. And to yeah. me, um, even though she wasn't, you know, um, but nobody can tell me that. Right. And, uh, you know, I'll fight them for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you like that, yeah. you know. Yeah. That's just yeah, the way yeah. it is. You love your mother. Just the way you it love is. your father. And, uh, yeah. you know, and it's the same way. It's, and that's a normal for any, any child to, you know, even if deep down they know. Well, they could have done some things better. Um, still, that's that's my mama, you know, and yeah, and that's the way Amesy saw it. And even though our situation definitely isn't my situation, um, and that she has two parents that communicate really good, yes, and uh, they do, yes. you know, we we do work together, we do talk, and, yes. Um, uh, so it's not going to be, she's not going to have my childhood, but uh. That's right. But I am grateful that Lana does not have a revolving door because that is hard on a child. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I got to relive I, having somebody coming and going in my life probably once a month. Yeah. <laughs> or when, I, you know, it's rough. I, uh, I'm thinking of uh, one person in particular. I don't know if you know her or not, but uh, this, this particular person, I mean, she is – jumping from relationship to relationship to relationship all the time and she just she doesn't understand like the most important thing that you can do is to be to be something to be a good role model for your kids and her kids now they're they've got to be gosh they gotta be now in their late teens now almost in their 20s and so well, i can't and this girl's been this way since i've known her since you know, almost a decade now. I don't. I don't know. So I can't imagine like watching that. Well, you you kind of have to uh, see in, in order to under to understand like both of my parents. You kind of have to go back a little bit. You know, um, my father is my father. Well, you know enough about him, but for my right. mother, it was different. My mother was different. See, 
my grandfather um, uh, passed away and a woman trying to take care of kids in the 60s and 70s and all the way up to probably the late 90s. Yeah. Um, you're, you're not looking at getting a good solid job where you can because take Because that doesn't exist. It yeah, doesn't exist. culture doesn't that. exist. Yeah, right. like they, they can go and, and get those jobs. But um, a lot of times if they've had those jobs, they also have a husband and they have a support system to take care of the kids. That's right. where a single, a single mother – like my mother's, you know, my grandmother, um, when my grandfather, when my grandfather passed away, you know, she was, she had, um, three kids, no man in the house, mm -hmm. not having a man in the house back then when you had kids was already taboo. Right. Yeah. Um, like that was, Oh Lord, you know, people say all kinds of stuff back then. They still say stuff now, but it's more accepted is, the, the, the standard now is more socially acceptable. And you take that dynamic and you take the dynamic that women did not make really any money. Um, right. And unless they, let's say they had their own business or, right. you know, they'd been somewhere, but they still had a support system um, or maybe an, even an education or they were trained in a job. But, right. you know, my grandmother went from man to man because she was afraid to be alone. And she couldn't make a lot of money. She she just couldn't bring the income. You know, fast forward to my mother, and it was a kind of the same. Like I get it. Like I, I understand completely. Like, right. Um, I'm out here. I mean, by myself, and even I got roommates. You know, <laughs> you know. Even though my neighbor thinks they're my parents. Um. Yeah. I'll tell you about that. Yeah. I, I met the neighbor, and he's like. Hey, I saw your parents come out the other day, and I went, "Ha ha!" And that's my parents. And he looked at me with his eyebrow like this. I'm like, "Yeah, I went to high school with him." I swear to God, he just looked at me, and went, "This guy named Doug. He's cool as a cucumber, man. He's a he is a pretty straight and narrow guy." Yeah. Um, either he's got to loosen up a lot, or that's just him. But uh. <laughs> the look on his face. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to go into that dynamic. We'll, we'll stay on what we were talking about. But um, so my mother, she she went from you know male to male, and what that it was in an, it was it created an environment of uncertainty because I never knew what I was going to at my mother's house because it right. was in her house, right? I didn't know who was going to be there. Um, and so it made me really uncomfortable because I couldn't really say I'm not going yeah. because my brother's there and my half sister's there who's 14 years younger than me. So it's not like it, I have an option. It's right. not like, oh, I can't come this weekend. You know, I've got to be yeah. there for my siblings. You know, I don't right. know who's going to be around them. So I had to go. And, uh, like that's, that's got to be, uh, that's got to be the hardest thing because not only do you get to know the people and you're like, oh, hell, well, they're actually cool. And sure as you say, sure as shit, as you, you say they're cool, they're also leaving soon. You know, they're they're on yeah. the way out. Um, and so then it was embarrassing. Was it, now, when they left, was it because it just didn't work out between the two? Did they want to make it work, or is it? No, my mother was using them. I mean, she was, I see. She was straight using these men. My mother was... Uh, was a, I guess, a pimp, I mean, or, or a player or whatever. I mean, she uh -huh. was she was taking these guys to the cleaners. And so I once heard they, that, they ran out of money, that the, they were gone. I mean, either that or they wise up to her or and you know, one, guy, yeah. one guy worked for Coca-Cola. I ran into him at the zoo, and he apologized to me. He said, Blake, I, I really liked you, man. Um your, your mother borrowed my truck and I never saw her again. They found my truck on the side of the interstate with the windows busted out and all my stereo and everything gone. And, yeah. uh, which I was like, I was like, yeah, that sounds about right. So that sounds about right. Yeah. I, I was yeah. surprised, you know, I, yeah. I, it was embarrassing, but when I realized that he'd actually pulled me over to the side and shook my hand and was being very respectful, 
he had went out of his way to make sure that I wasn't embarrassed and that he was just talking to me. And uh, yeah. I think the guy had real high hopes, and he was used. Uh, he was a good guy, sounds like. He was He was a good guy. I mean, my mother met several really, really good men. And uh, like I said, the one I do talk to, the one I what the other one I, I did talk to, you know, her my, my stepfather, he he uh you know he, he decided to that life was just too much. But uh you know, I tried to keep in touch with him as much as I could because I didn't want him talking about mom all the time. I wanted him to kind of you gotta let go, man. Like, trust me, I I know like she's my mom. I I miss her every day, but um you know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta keep going. It's, it's just, hard. It it's really hard. is hard. It's hard. And I, and I felt it way with times. I felt at times with Rodney that I was perpetuating that behavior. So I would have to limit my exposure to him because I didn't want mm. him to get his feelings. And I didn't want him to think that he had to be something that, you know, that, that no longer needed to be like, you know, right. my mother's gone. Yeah. She's safe. She's not suffering yeah. anymore. Definitely. I'm a grown man, you know. I don't, I don't need a father figure anymore. You know, I, I right. always get a mentor and a friend, yeah. And that's how I viewed him, but I didn't want him to think that uh, he was still filling a role that he, you know, that role was. There was no reason for that role anymore. I wanted right. him to live his own life. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And uh, you know that would have that would have been great. Um, <laughs> And uh, fortunately, though it didn't, it didn't go that way. I think, uh, I think he ended up getting his. Both his parents died, mm -hmm. and he came into a fortune, an absolute mm -hmm. mother load of money. And granted, Rodney, my stepfather, he, he, he only had like a seventh, eighth grade education. Mm -hmm. His father was very abusive and didn't like mm -hmm. him. And when he was 13, his father reported him to the police for stealing a gun. Uh, the gun never existed. Hmm. So he would, he would spend the next, what, five years at Mount May's youth facility right down the road. Oh, oh wow. That's, yeah. that's where he spent the rest of his childhood. So when he got out, he could, he could barely, uh, he can barely write. He couldn't spell things correctly. He'd have to get me to read it. Um, mm -hmm. and then, you know, when I told him, I said, man, you know, I didn't know that's the kind of childhood you had. I mean, if you want me to help you learn to read things or I'll go through your shop and redo all your signs where you've got, you know, the English is proper. And, and I did, yeah. I did address all that up because I, I made fun of him because I didn't know even. And at, at that time, that was late nineties. I didn't know people still couldn't read. And, oh, and yeah. I, no, there's but, yeah. Like illiterate, like he was, he, and he was. It wasn't like completely illiterate, but he also right. had a. He was vision impaired. He had really bad cataracts. Oh no. Uh, so yeah, well, I mean, but he refinished furniture, and I'm gonna tell you something. The guy could refinish furniture, probably the best in the state, because he couldn't see. So yeah. he'd have to feel the furniture. He could feel oh, the how it contoured, green how it and the texture. Functioned. Yeah. So yeah. and he would. Uh, he was one of the first ones to really start using Bondo to repair uh, furniture versus wood glue. This wood glue cracks, mm -hmm. you know, the wood paste, it'll, right. it'll crack over a small amount of time. The Bondo never cracks. It stays smooth, huh. and you can, you can paint it and blend it, and it looks like real wood, and it lasts huh. forever. Huh. So, yeah, I mean, I'll, I mean, he would be like, look at that and tell me what you think. It looks good. He wouldn't even look at it. No, that's in too much. we got to fix that. So yeah, I did a little furniture refinishing with him. He was uh, but he was great at it, man. Um, unfortunately though, you know, with that education, nobody ever taught him. You know, they don't. I don't know how they do it now, but those kids back then, they didn't teach him anything. There was no high school in in that in that situation. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you stayed there until they could get rid of you, and they got rid of you, and. Uh, you know, there's no balance in your checkbook. There's no business. No. Sense. So, well, um, I th I think there was. I could have been, been mistaken, but I think at some point there was a home econ class and they did actually have classes that went over that kind of stuff. I kind of remember that. But um, 
I don't think it is actually as part of school curriculums. I know various states are starting to put that kind of stuff, the personal finance stuff in the schools, which they, they absolutely need to do. Uh, mm -hmm. Because if not, where are you going to learn about money from? The only place you're going to learn about money from is your parents. You know, right. Well, your parents I don't, don't think teach they, you. I don't well. think Mount Mag Youth Facility, when he was growing up, even had a high school in it. Yeah. Because there's no way he went to a, a class after he went there. There's yeah. no way he went to a class. Because, I mean, he, he could have got Went out he to was, work as soon as he got out. Yeah. So, yeah, he went straight to work. We're finishing furniture because he was uh, he was helping. He was doing that in there. That's but right. uh, but yeah, they they didn't have like he never said, oh, yeah, we had school. They just, right. he said, they just said in there like grown men. So yeah. they, there was no education for those guys. Right. Um, and that's that man. That's sad. You're supposed to go to your facility to get help. And. And they stick you in a box. Um, and that's yeah. not that long ago, you know. That's right. He wasn't uh hit. my mom, he was a younger man. So, you know, he was like fifteen, like maybe twelve years older than me, maybe ten. Oh wow. So he wasn't yeah, he was not that much. No, he wasn't that much older than me. So he would have been fifteen. So like if you were eighteen, he was thirty. Yeah. So just just think about that, you know. I'm forty, going to be forty three this year. So like thirteen years ago, I was thirty. So that's, you know, just imagine, you know, the type of person. Imagine wow. that there was a place right down the road while we were going to, you were going to Mo what Montgomery Academy. I was going to what Holland Avenue and Capitol Heights. Um. Yeah, I'd have to have been going to elementary school and even a little junior high. He was sitting in there not doing anything. Yeah. That's, or, or, that's the man. Or, or, let's say we were in elementary school and uh, yeah. he, was, he, was, he wasn't even going to school. But man, that's a. Uh, hmm. But that's that's the the argument that you have to make that for education is, is like, you know, societies crumble when there's not good education. You know, if you don't give the kids the alternative to do something with their life, not just education, but also the, the ability to have a second chance, because obviously he didn't do anything wrong. He couldn't prove that he couldn't do anything wrong, but you know, he wasn't it. given that chance. Yeah. And I can, like I said, they couldn't, like his parents couldn't prove it either because they couldn't provide a serial number or nothing. Um, yeah. His dad ended up apologizing. But, uh, <laughs> oh, I'll be five years of your life completely yeah. wreck any potential that you could have had like a normal life. Yeah, I yeah. Know. Sorry, we'll cut it. <laughs> I mean, it didn't. He didn't really ever let it go, and I, I don't. I don't necessarily blame him. I mean, yeah. that's a uh, God. I just can't imagine like that kind of what that must feel like. You know, I mean, mm. I can't. I mean, I I can, but I can't. Like not getting the education part, you know. Um, yeah, that's got to be. I don't know, man. I don't know. So like to just sit around, and you know, other kids are getting an education and yeah. everything you're going through started with a lot. That's just yeah. got to be heavy. Um, but you know, he made the best of it. But yeah, he did. He got, he got a large sum of money, and he did not get any kind of financial advice or any kind of you know financial planner to say okay here's what you got let's make a plan you know mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. you know even tyler did that you know tyler i, I even asked him so man if you you got all that money you've gone and talked to somebody and they've told you exactly what to do or you've given them enough power of attorney to do it for you and they can't take it from you right so yeah it's done Okay, good. Yeah. So he he started a, you know his his daughter, uh, his daughter ain't got nothing to worry about because I don't. Uh, think it, it, Rodney never had any kids of his own, did he? He had one, yeah. Okay, okay. She still talks to my sister, and she sometimes uh, I hadn't talked to her since I changed Facebooks. Uh huh. But uh, she's got two. She's got two boys. Okay. And uh okay. and that's another that's another podcast there. That's another call. So did he uh so did Rodney plan to leave any of the money to her? Uh no, he didn't plan anything. 
Okay. So, you know, that's, that's, that's just a, that's a tragedy. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, if I were to drop dead tomorrow, everything's in place for me to make sure every, that Jill and Evie and Bishop were taken care of. Like that's, that's a, you know, that is, the, if, if I could impart any type of wisdom to anybody, I would tell them you want to plan to have at least two to three streams of income as you get older because you're not going to be working forever you're not yeah. so have at least two to three streams of income the sooner you can get the other two the second or third stream the better and then as you're building these things up make sure that you got term life insurance mm -hmm. you know 10 times your annual income and you know have a will made yeah. up well you know he ended up you know, the, the, the weekend he left, he ended up leaving a note explaining everything. And one of the mm -hmm. things was, uh, you know, he had lost all his money. Um, I knew his half-sister that come up there and she had talked to me because she wanted me to be the executor. And I, I just said that I don't, I said, I don't have time, you know. Um, yeah. But one of the things he brought up in his notes was, was money. He said, I yeah. spent all my money. I lost my yeah. family. And then he apologized. And uh, I mean, we're talking upwards of, I think, half a mil. Yeah. And he blew that in Tallahassee, Alabama. Yeah. Well, and, uh, that's that's one thing that I hope anybody would, would think about first. Because even if you lose all your money, don't lose your life because you lost all your well, money. I it's mean, not he, worth it because with the, the scars that you leave for the people left behind, you know, I think one person, you know, this person's good person, but, but what, you know, stays captive in, uh, in her mind is that, you know, father committed suicide, you know, and it, it haunts them. It haunts the people left behind. You would rather your kids feel like he was, they, close, to they, he was yeah. close to my sister my sister still wonders about it because she he came and seen her like two weekends before and said he'd be back and that was it mm -hmm. you know? so you're right though it's a um it's never been an option for i don't know i understand i've been that depressed where i could i could i, I could to. empathize with, I, I could empathize with that pain I but i know but some other shit's going to happen. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean it that, that in an absolutely good way. It may not be yeah. great then, um, but I tell my daughter all the time, like, baby, the only thing that's constant in this world is change. Change yeah. is always happening. You're always going to be changing situation. Things are going to go up and they're going to go down. But I said, don't no, That's a long-term solution. That's a permanent solution to a temporary situation. Right, right. I said, you, yes, it's a to a temperature. That's a, that's good. Yeah, you're good. That's right. You, that's you right. can't you can't throw in the towel for something that you can dig yourself out of. Yeah, in a couple of months, or with yeah. a phone call, or yeah, with the right opportunity, or yeah. or you hear some good news, or you talk to the right person. That's that's uh, I, I said that those emotions that they'll they'll get the best of you, and we've been working yeah. on the, her emotions. Um. Uh, Good. I've been. We're, I'm teaching her the uh, the react versus respond. You know, yes. why it's important that you sit down and and process those emotions and and really chew it down. You know, just mm -hmm. just settle down. Um, you know, we're in a society right now that all they want us to do is react. There's a react yeah. button. They want mm -hmm. your reactions. You know, right? They don't want right. your responses. They don't want your educated or your thought out, clever responses because they have to answer that with, with a good answer. And they don't want to do that. They'll just call yeah. you name or, or just yeah. ignore you, but you can be angry and then they can just call you angry and be done with you. So That's right. explain That's that right. to them. Baby said, said, uh, I said, they, I said, media, social media, all that stuff. They want your reactions. Yeah. 
So that's yeah. why you see all and all, that and, and all, oh, the only thing about the, if you look at it from a business standpoint, the only reason why they want your re reactions to, is to cultivate data. This is yeah. the data cultivating. Well, you know. and they're marketing. They're not a yeah. Well, CNN and Fox. They're not news corporations. They are marketing companies. They sell advertising. Right. They sell right. time. So they have right. to keep their viewership engaged. And, well, they, well, they're beholden. They're beholden to their advertisers. That's what it is. Well, I mean, you think about it though, like the reason the game. Well, yeah, I thought about. Well, why has it changed now? Because this is something I've been thinking about recently. What's different about the news now versus when we were growing up? And uh, well, for one, we didn't have twenty-four hour news. Didn't have twenty-four hour news, and we would always when, they when we were watching, we would watch Dan Rather. You know those those specific time slots in which he had a time to watch. You know everything that was going on within the country and in the world. Yeah, versus right. twenty-four hour news. And if they made a mistake, they couldn't fix it till the next day, and the <laughs> newspapers gave them hell. Right. It wasn't as simple as, you know, we'll oh, just we'll just post it on uh we'll just post it on our on our on our uh, internet page and and uh social media and we're good. We ain't gotta worry mm -hmm. about it anymore. Um but no, like back then they had to wait till the next day. And right. the news stations in the meantime and the, the newspapers, they made it clear, hey. They screwed up. Let me show you how. So they had to wait <laughs> all day long. What did that cost them, though? It caused them advertisements and yeah. money because people wouldn't yeah. renew that they wouldn't advertise with them. That's right. So you fast forward now. You remember when 24 Hours News came out? Like at 1030, it was you get ready for a long night with Billy Mays, Hayes, and uh, Vince <laughs> Deal. Learn to get the slap chop or the sham wow or, you know, was yeah. it Flex Deal? And yeah. Oxy yeah. clean, you know, yeah. those guys were everybody knows them because that's the channel you left it on when you were trying to go to sleep, right? You know? Right, um, right. And it wasn't 24 hour news, wasn't popular because right. when they, they didn't have all they did was they ran it, um, like they ran the 10 o'clock report or the six o'clock news. They didn't give you the they didn't go Sundays, you had Sundays, and it was either day, dateline or 60 minutes. And that's yeah. when you got the interviews and you got in depth, but yeah, Friday? I think uh -uh. the nineties, nineties is when it really started to really take hold. Uh, it, uh, it was after late it was 90s. After I graduated. It's when I noticed yeah, late nineties. It was late nineties is when they came out. And then I started noticing like, Oh shit, where's, where's my infomercials at? You know, I'm, yeah. I'm looking for that next great product and yeah, they, they got an expert now. So, oh, mm -hmm. let me look at this. And then now and they figured it out that you you have to have those opinions. You have to turn yeah everything into a discussion. You well, know, it, everything. The advent of that, I think Fox News, and I'm not talking about, about Fox News. I'm but Fox News when they introduced personalities, you know, they actually had personalities that you kind of you gravitated towards, like Bill O'Reilly and Megan Kelly and um Gosh, you, you, I could go on, but when she, when they started introducing that too, that kind of introduced all the other because it was so new and the ratings were catching up, and they were losing the revenue dollars. It's like, oh, we gotta do what they do, and then you know, then you started seeing this too, and it just it just kind of created this you know landscape of of people that are or have their personality, and so when you put in personality. You have ideology starting to come right behind it too, so yeah. you know, that's and that's that's what's opened up the door. Um, but kind of going back to what you were talking about, as far as uh, you know, Rodney, uh, I read an article. It, it was horrifying because I, you rarely hear about this type of scenario. It was a it was a murder suicide. But what it was, it was, it was a. A mother that did it she came home one day she killed her husband uh i think she had three kids and then you know killed herself and the reason why she did that was is because they were foreclosing on her house 
And so apparently she was the one handling the finances. They didn't know what was going on. And so uh, I'm not sure if the one child that was in the hospital survived or not, but to get to a place where you're just, you, you, you just don't want to lose it all. And so you just, you don't want to face the face what you did and you, you do that. And, you know, it, it was just, a, I, I, you rarely hear about that. You really, you'll see a story about a guy doing, but rarely would you ever see a, about, about a woman doing that and not just uh you know life is yeah. life is suffering that's one of the yeah. four noble truths of buddhism is life is suffering it's gonna yeah. it's gonna have it inside of there but if you understand that that's a truth then that should give you the strength to move forward and face life yeah that's true man it's so uh, you know I, i'm never <clears throat> I, I can't emphasize that that feeling of loneliness or like there's no way out, but um, I've never felt like when I had thoughts of the, you know, the thoughts of actually doing something like that, it pissed me off. Like yeah. I get mad, like I'm not quitting. Yeah. They can all kiss my ass. I, don't <laughs> think kiss my ass. I get mad and, uh, yeah. you know, and then I, something would come out. I, I, I guess, uh, I guess sometimes you do have to get mad, you know, to get no, things. Yeah, sometimes, no. It, sometimes there's nothing wrong with a little anger at your situation and going, you know what? I'm tired of this shit. Yeah, you know, no. I'm, there I is a such that, a thing as fine. righteous anger. There is a such thing as righteous anger. You and yeah, yeah. when your response of, of wanting to quit, you get angry about it. That's that's the little preacher inside of you just welling up, saying, "Hey, I'm not, I'm not a quitter." You know, I'm not. Yeah, I, I don't like to give up, man. Like that's a that's exactly yeah that's uh that's not something I, <laughs> yeah i know <laughs> I, that's something i do like I, I will do lightly uh but i mean i have seen you know the damage that uh you know with rodney taking his life uh my 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 grandfather my mom's father actually did the same thing his life he uh he had an accident he was uh he had a dui um, back then they didn't have DUIs though. So he wasn't charged with anything, right. but he injured himself so bad that he lost his eye, lost mm -hmm. his leg. He was really disfigured. And mm -hmm. so he couldn't serve in the military. So they, they general discharged him. Uh -huh. He was on full disability, but, uh -huh. um, you know, he, he fell apart. Yeah. And he, and he ended up taking his own life. Yeah. And, uh, you know, me and mama had talked about that. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know. I, I've never been in a situation where it was medical. It's always been in my head or always just, you know, unfortunate circumstances. But I just don't think that, like I said, I just think I'd get mad again. Yeah. You know, I just think, no, oh, I'm not quitting. I'm ugly now. Not going anywhere, yeah. you know. <laughs> you well, yeah. the other, well, the other side of it too is is like you've got a good group of, of people. It doesn't have to be a lot, even if it's just a few that genuinely do care about you, you know. And that's that's the other side. It's, it's sometimes it's hard, especially for me, to mm -hmm. kind of accept love, genuine love. I, yeah. I I struggle with that myself. Uh, growing up, I I really struggled with it, but you know, I I have a I you genuinely have a daughter that loves you, you know, love genuinely loves you, and you you know that you you know, well the you know the and men then, just like I do too, you know. Well, you know the men though from our gen you know our generation came from a generation where, you know, it was that was just not something that they showed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and that's. Now, you know, that's, you know, for me, that's like, I, I accept it now, you know, I mean, I, I use that as a, you know, that's how they are. That's how they mm -hmm. were. That's not how I am. Uh, Matthew McConaughey uh, wrote a, I think it's a biography. I can't, it's not an autobiography or memoir. All right. All right. All right. Card. Yeah. <laughs> it's called green lights. So I bought right. it on audiobook and I listened to it 
And so in, in it, he talks about his dad. His dad used to play football, actually, pro football. And mm -hmm. uh, he's just talking about how how tough of a man he was and, and how he disciplined him. But how he disciplined, raised him was not how he raised his kids. So it, it's a, actually a really good listen. And I highly recommend it for anybody that wants to I'll take a look know, at it. Yeah, yeah. It's called Green Lights. So. I will uh, I'll definitely take a look at it. I like Matthew McConaughey. He's a really good yeah, speaker. Dude. Um, you can't help but like the guy. I mean, he'd be he, like, he's, your house is on fire, Matt. Uh, we'll get through it. Don't worry about it. You know, got me. <laughs> right. I got that me a new like Lincoln. It. Got me a new Lincoln. You know, <laughs> sometimes you got to ride in the Lincoln to see where you're going, even if your house is yeah. on fire. You know? <laughs> That's what I love about them Lincolns. I get older and say the same age. <laughs> same, same age. <laughs> Man, I, I've got a. Uh, I need to speak with her mother. Um, I got to talk to Angie's mama here in a minute. Um. Hello. Let's pick back up. Like I wanna I wanna devote some real time to this. Um Yeah, man. I'd like to return. Uh just got a lot going on this week. Uh, that's good, brother. Hey, uh, we, I was just glad we we had some time to talk. That's all that matters. Well, and there was something I need to bring up to you that me and Angie have been talking about. Uh, mm. she's been wanting to discuss racism. And mm. uh I was like, baby, what, what what do you what do you why would you want to discuss racism? And she yeah. says, well, the, the girls in my class keep calling me and everybody racist. And then they say things to the Asian kid. And I'm like, baby, did you ask him or did you tell the teacher to tell, to like say something to an adult? Um, I said, I'll be happy to talk to you. Um, but yeah, man, I just kind of wanted to talk to you about the, yeah, having your kid come home and finding out that being called a racist is now a schoolyard insult is kind of infuriating. <laughs> That's very infuriating. It's a because I mean when we I, were going up and meant something that was uh yeah so uh, yeah man we'll probably maybe we can talk early next week or something. Um, yeah, man, absolutely. But yeah, I'm, I've got to run and talk to her because that's kind of some of this is what this is pertaining to. So have fun. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little angry. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I got to talk to her mother and say, hey, we need to talk to the teacher because if that yeah. doesn't stop, uh, you're going to have a very, very desensitized group of kids going into the future who ain't going to care because they've been called that all their life. Right. So, so but yeah, let me let me talk to her, man. And uh, yeah, let's set up another time. I think I, yeah, I think I'll. Next time we'll have to set up. I'll set up some real time. I didn't. Um, it's just been crazy this week, man. I understand, so. Bob. Hey, we'll get we'll catch up again soon. Yeah, man. I'll talk to you later, brother. All right. Love you, bud. Love you too, man. Take it easy. Take it easy. Bye. Bye.